Muslims in Sri Lanka are living with fear and feeling of uncertainty about their future. Serious violence against Muslims have been staged within the country, especially after 21st April Easter bombing attacks. Recently, Sri Lankan Muslims are experiencing attacks not only on their properties and businesses, but also to practice their religion and to wear the dress of their choice. Muslims in Sri Lanka are a minority community with less than 10% of the entire population of 20 million in the country. They had a healthy relationship with the majority Sinhalese Buddhists in the history, except a few isolated incidences. Unfortunately, this picture has changed since 2014 when the hardcore extremist Buddhist organization Bodhubala Sena started its anti-Muslim campaign. The secretary of Bodhubala Sena, Jnana Saratero, has openly conducted anti-Muslim propaganda in a rally in 2014, which started a series of violence against Muslims and are continuing until now. <laughs> As a result of this, extremists carried out attack on Muslims in Aluthgame, a town in the southern part of Sri Lanka, leaving millions of worth properties damaged and four deaths and 80 people injured. The people were in anger and fear. The political leaders were disappointed and helpless. What has happened? The law and order machinery has failed to protect uh, the innocent people of this area. Having all the intelligence at their command, uh, a government which defeated the, the worst terrorism in the world um, is unable to contain uh, uh, organized civil society mob uh, which is uh, being led uh, by a saffron clad uh, uh, Buddhist priest. This attack was just a start and not the end. In February 2018, a group of men claimed a Muslim restaurant in Ampara town mixed some tablets causing male sterilization to the food served to Sinhalese and started violence against Muslim in the town. A Juma mosque was completely destroyed. A state minister, Mohammed Haris, who visited to assess the damage, was threatened by the group of Sinhalese mob in front of high police officials. A few months after this, another series of mob attacks unleashed in a city close to Kandy in the central province. Again, Muslim houses, mosques and shops were the target. Muslims in Sri Lanka are in fear at present. Their houses are attacked and the shops are looted. Thousands of Muslims were arrested under emergency law without proper reasons. A lady was kept in prison for nearly three weeks for wearing a frock with a picture of ship's steering wheel, but the police has accused as it's a symbol of Buddhism, which is not true. It appears that the police officers have arrested her with a plan. Army is carrying out search operations in many Muslim houses and there are reported arrests for keeping Quran and Hadith books. People tend to hide these or to burn them in some instances to prevent getting arrested. A false news on a leading newspaper featured accusing a Muslim doctor illegally carried out sterilization on Sinhalese mothers while performing caesarean section. Many gynecologists have reported that this is impossible and other health professionals worked with him testified that no such illegal sterilization has been carried out by him. However, this doctor is still under remand for almost a month. Number of Muslim doctors and other professionals have started leaving the country as a result of this insecurity. It appears to be a planned campaign against Muslims to suppress their right to practice the religion and to destroy their economy. Anti-Islamic ideologies are being promoted among the majority Sinhala Buddhists through social media and some racial mainstream media in the country.
Some of the high authority Buddhist monks also have started to spread hatred speech against Muslims, requesting the Buddhists to refrain from buying from Muslim owned shops. A chief priest from Asgiriya chapter, which is one of the two Buddhist monasteries that holds the custodianship of sacred tooth relic of Lord Buddha, has made such open statement recently. <laughs> The target of Buddhist extremists has now turned towards the dress code of Muslim women. The government has announced an official ban on burqa for women in the country. Later, Ministry of Public Administration instructed all government officers should wear saris, meaning Muslim ladies are prevented from wearing dress covering their body. Muslim women in Sri Lanka are now facing serious threats with the dress code they were wearing for many years at their workplaces or even in the buses. Some women are quitting their jobs as well. Buddhist monks and extremists went on to apply pressure on Muslim political leaders as well. Rallies and fasting campaigns were carried out demanding resignation of certain Muslim ministers and governors. There were also warnings given to stage riots if they failed to leave their portfolios. As a result, the entire Muslim ministers resigned to save the community from the mob attacks. Cabinet ministers, uh, state ministers and deputy ministers have taken a decision today to resign from all the positions. As a matter of fact, innocent Muslims, they have become victims today. And until uh, we are satisfied that the hate culture is rid, of, rid out of this country, only then we'll, we will feel confident to be uh, serving in a government. Throughout the history, Muslims in Sri Lanka were loyal to the country and contributed to its cultural and economical development. Following the Easter bombing attacks, they are pointed and all kinds of human rights violations are prevalent. Muslims in Sri Lanka are longing for a permanent solution for the current issues against them to ensure their peaceful existence in a country they lived for hundreds of years.